What is going on? This is the Leafs Combo Podcast for Vanguard Northeast Realty in Scarborough. Vanguard NE.ca. It is June 23rd, 2019. The NHL entry draft for 2019 is come and gone. And our best friend in hockey, our best friend in podcast, Mike Ogiello, was there to see it all, document it, and talk about it. Michael. Good morning, Norman. Uh, yeah, it's. I have to say it's a beautiful city. And um, in spite of the Toronto hate that the, the fans have whenever the Leafs name was mentioned at the draft there was lots of booing but it is a beautiful Canadian city and it's been a great three days but uh, we have we're gonna have a lot of news uh, over the next few weeks when it comes to the Maple Leafs all right let's get right to it what was the most important thing that happened as it relates to the buds well I think the most important thing was getting and what appears to be two-thirds of the restricted free agent saga uh, completed um, Bob McKenzie reported yesterday that uh, deals for Andreas Janssen and Kasperi Kapanen are nearly complete or complete, but just not finishing touches put on them. And if the reports are accurate, and I don't doubt Bob McKenzie ever, um, <laughs> getting Kapanen uh, on a three-year deal for a little over $3 million, getting Janssen on a four-year deal for around $3.3, $3.4 million, um, the only bad thing about that is that the four-year deal for Janssen walks him right to unrestricted free agency, but I think the Leafs calculated that um, to get him on a more friendly cap figure uh, was more important than that. They can always sign him or they can always trade him a few years down the line, but getting that done in the wake of trading Patrick Marlowe uh, was an extremely important factor for Kyle Dubas. I, I just think that the... <laughs> Giving up a 2020 first round pick to clear up the mess of Lou Lamorello uh, with a third year Marlowe deal was unfortunate. But uh, in talking to Dubis, uh, amongst other reporters at Scrum after the after the draft, it sounds like he really had no choice. That was the price to pay, and they needed to move Marlowe. Well, you have to unload the baggage of past regimes, though, Mike, and you do it by any means necessary to move forward. You do, and uh, but but sometimes it cripples you, and it's it seems to me right now that you know the Marlowe deal, the the seven years to Nikita Zaitsev, those were albatrosses around the neck of Kyle Dubas uh, that Lou Lamorello left. Now uh, also you know the the contract situations of Marner, of of Matthews, of Nylander were things that were left on Dubas, and up to this point, you know I think people were giving sort of middling grades to Dubas about the Nylander situation because he didn't play well and he's making basically what he was asking for. And they paid um, the, an amount uh, commensurate with an eight year contract on Matthews for five years. So that's why the, the Marner situation is extremely important. And uh, Dubas has a lot of work in front of him. This is the Leafs Combo Podcast for Vanguard Northeast Realty in Scarborough, Vanguard NE.ca. Eli Cohen on Twitter. When Marner recruited Tavares for the Leafs, did he know that he would make things harder for himself? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, there's only, there's only a certain pot of money. And, you know, when you have I mean, Matthews, you knew was going to be making big money. And Tavares, obviously, if they're recruiting, was going to make that kind of money. Maybe Marner thought that it would it would give him um, a bit of problem. But the thing is, I mean, he's put in the situation because of Tavares in the sense that he has the leverage to get big money because Tavares played with him and because he scored over 90 points. So it's sort of a, you know, double-edged sword in a way. The draft is done. Kyle Dubas has held court. He has a lot of work to do. Should we expect anything to happen July 1st that would benefit the Maple Leafs in an impactful way? Well, I, I think there's a lot more house cleaning to come. I mean, the Zaitsev situation is not clarified. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be in Toronto any longer. Uh, the contract is going to be a problem. I don't know whether uh, that's going to require a what they call sweetener uh, in, the, in the deal. I mean, the one positive about the Marlowe deal is the fact that the Leafs didn't give up somebody they've developed over the last couple of years in the deal. They gave them first. That's a steep price. They didn't give up Rocco. They didn't give up Lilligren. They didn't give up Sandin. So that's positive. But, um, you know, I've, I've heard the talk about Edmonton and Vancouver with Zaitsev. I've heard you know, maybe other teams are interested, but the five years, uh, the term on that deal may require the Leafs to make it more of a bigger deal to find somebody to take 
him on. And that's, you know, that's the task to come for, for Dubas here. He has to be able to find um, home, a home for Zaitsev. Um, probably has to create uh, some room by uh, maybe moving Connor Brown. Although I don't know if that's a, uh, you know, that's something that they really want to do, but they may have to do for cap ramifications. Um, they're going to maybe move out guys like Garrett Sparks, who clearly I don't think will, will play in the NHL next year under under Mike Babcock. So there's there's work to do. And and Dubas said essentially the Marner situation, uh, it, un, being unresolved, is preventing them from from making whatever the next move is. Now that might be just pressure being put on Darren Ferris and Marner to to come to the table and get something done. And it sounds like mm-hmm. they're going to talk to other teams when the window opens on Wednesday. But I, I also, I also think that, you know, he's saying, well, we can't sign somebody like Jake Gardner uh, because we don't know how much we're spending on Marner. And the thing is, even if they know how much they're spending on Marner, I don't think they could bring Jake Gardner back because after Carlson and Truba and all these other defensive moves, it sounds like Gardner is going to get over 7 million in free agency. And he's simply not worth that. The Leafs don't need to be stuck in a bottleneck when they need fluidity, Mike. And I have a feeling that Ferris and his crew, with some of the information they've put out there, aren't going to really care what the Maple Leafs want to accomplish. They're all about their client. Mm -hmm. Look, It's nice to get your money, but don't you want your client to be a part of a cohesive unit that is building towards winning something? The moves made here in Vancouver and, you know, those to be announced if Kapanen and Janssen are signed, uh, you know, today or tomorrow, those are those are keeping the status quo. That's not improving the team. It's yeah. like okay, you kept Kapanen, who's a twenty goal scorer. You kept Janssen, who's a twenty goal scorer. They're young, yeah. talented. Players. They're in the fold. It's locked up. Um, you've moved Patrick Marlowe, who's probably going to see a diminished role next year. Um, you know, that's that's okay. But now you still have a, coming out of Vancouver. You haven't upgraded your defense. Mm. Um, your your backup goaltending situation is, uh, I think, minor league at best. Uh, <laughs> left side of your of your uh, forwards. I mean, uh, Babcock indicated he's probably going to move the uh, the new Russian Ilya Mikhaev, who's a left hand shot, to the left side uh, to replace Marlowe. And and you know Zach Hyman's going to be out to, to November. I mean, all these things. I mean they really haven't made any improvements. They have just kept what they had. Now the task for Dubas is to find a way to improve within the limited scope of what he has to work with. You can't really blame Dubas for what's happening with Marner and how they feel about things. It's just the progression of Marner's career and where he's at and the type of status that he wants to project based on the type of player he is. Back to Zaitsev. Here is a guy that people would say, isn't you know he's not an impact guy he's not a, a guy that you're going to be expecting to become a stalwart on a team that's going deep in the playoffs right so how on earth can you send him anywhere without uh, accessorizing the trade bring something back that not only the Leafs need but would be welcome well I mean I think what they're looking for and there are teams out there that consider Zeitz have a top four defenseman who you know, eats minutes. And, you know, I think the problem is the term, the salary is not a problem, but the term is the problem. Uh, and that's what probably will require the Leafs to add something to the deal to make it a package deal. I mean, their, their look at Zaitsev in terms of what they bring back is, you know, if they can get a bottom pairing defenseman for him, somebody, not just a body, but somebody they can use in, in, a, in a particular role, um, then that's the, a benefit for them. But I mean, that, <laughs> you're trading Zaitsev, Haynes is a UFA. Gardner's probably gone. Uh, Dermot's out until November. Uh, you really, you're, you're, you're lacking for bodies here. And that's why I think that, uh, you know, Dubas is going to have to find a way. I mean, we, I think we all knew the PK Subban rumors from the weekend were fantasy. Um, but that's the thing is like, again, they signed Beyonce, they signed Kapanen. If they sign Marner, then who's left on the right side? the strong right side to go out and move for a top four defenseman mm-hmm. could be Willie, Willie, Willie. It makes sense, but it would make a lot of people crazy. This is the Leafs Convo podcast. Ray Rabbi, still no captain. No team has won it all without one.
it's not going to be announced now. If it's going to be announced, it's going to be announced just before training camp. So I, you know, I mean, do I think there'll be a captain? Yes. Do I, mm-hmm. I think his name will be Austin Matthews. Um, and I think it'll happen right at the beginning of training camp, maybe announced when they open training camp. And uh, I think it's in, in Newfoundland. I mean, yeah, I think it's going to happen. I don't think it's on the, on the front burner. There are a lot more important things with this team to happen in the next two to three months than naming the cap. Jay Kokinen, did the Leafs give up too much to unload Marlowe? Probably, but it was a necessary evil. He wants to know if increased alcohol consumption would help him be a better Leafs fan. Probably, Jay. <laughs> Try it and let me know. Mm-hmm. So Marlowe's gone. And social media was pretty sorrowful and sad and melancholy and reflective over the two years Marlowe spent with the Maple Leafs. He came at a time when the team was in a position to legitimize itself with a free agent signing of his status, but now needs to move on. And so does he. Do you think his impact something left over there for those guys to carry on forward well yeah i I definitely think so me saw the comment mitch marner made i think either on instagram or on twitter about the influence that marlo had on him and we know that marlo matthews and and marner were very close over the two years i mean i think overall i know i know people are just looking at the dollars and cents of it but overall the the tenure of patrick marlo was positive Mm -hmm. in toronto he's a consummate pro he showed these players how to be consummate pros, and that's 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 a good thing. Now, the the only negative of the whole situation, I mean, if the intent of Lou Amarello and uh, the Leafs were, were to sign Patrick Marlowe as just a tutor, then six and a quarter million dollars was a heavy price to pay. If he was brought in to be that, to be an influence and help them win a Stanley Cup, then they didn't go the, the extra mile because him in and of himself was not enough to get this team to contender status. They needed to add on defense and they still haven't done that. And that until they do, this team is sort of a faux contender and not really a contender for the Stanley cup. This is going to be a tough one for Kyle Dubas. Let's root this kid on, man. I'm telling you the two big things here, the Mars contract situation, which a lot of it isn't up to him. Most of it isn't. And what he's going to do to improve the defense vis-a-vis who he's going to trade William Melander to. Those are two big, big things. And all we can do is support the guy in his endeavors because I'd hate to see this Leafs team be slightly worse than the team are going. I hate to see this Leafs team be less effective next mm-hmm. season than the one we just saw last word to you mike yeah i i agree with your assessment and i think that uh I, i'm very curious to see that the steps that dubas will take over the next few days uh, ideally i think they want to get marner uh settled but it sounds like they at least want to put the pressure on the leaps by talking to other teams and we'll see how they react after that mm-hmm. well Maybe in a couple of years, the Leafs are hoisting the cup and number 29 is right there front and center and Mitch Marner's playing for a team that has yet to be named. Who knows? Mike Safe travels out of Van City. We'll get back to it on the regular tip this coming week. Later, buddy. Thanks, Norman. We would like to thank Vanguard Northeast Realty in Scarborough, title sponsor of the Leafs Convo, demonstrating passion for the industry and a superior level of excellence in selling, leasing, and marketing your property. Vanguard Northeast Realty.